Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Pastor Pierre. I hope you're doing well. I know that I am. Uh, one of the reasons why I'm doing well is because I'm still stuck on uh, our conversation last Saturday evening at our Saturday small group at our Cedar Grove location. And yes, we're in this series on the power and the glory of God. And yes, we know that if we, we want to see the glory manifested, which is the reality of heaven that we have to have a hunger and a thirst for. We have to have an appetite for it based off of Psalm 63. Yes, we know based off of 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 9 all the way through the end of the chapter. Yes, we know that we have the mind of Christ and that we are privy to the things that the Spirit is privy to because no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God and God has given us His Spirit. Uh, and then we learned two weeks ago how in Psalm 33 it told us that the Word and the works of God, that they are right, that they are true, and that they are done. But then we looked over in verse uh, in chapter uh, 52 of the book of Psalm and it said that I will praise you forever because you have done it. So last Saturday evening, we were just driving that thing in uh, because there are things that you and I desire in our lives, in our personal ministries, in our collective ministry as the church of God. There are things that we desire for our health. Hello, happy birthday. There are things that we desire and oftentimes we put so much focus on attaining the strategy from God. Uh, but God is saying, listen, that it's already done, that I'm not going to give more to you or I'm not going to do more for you than that in which I've already given you and I'm not going to do more more for you uh, than that in which I've already done. Why? Because everything is already completed. So now let's get the manifestation of it because it's good to hear the word and the Bible says and all by getting get understanding. So now we just drilled in last week the understanding that if we know that we ought to praise God forever, Psalm uh, 52, that be because you have done it. So whatever your it is, you have to get that thing wrapped in your minds that it's already done. Uh, Isaiah said, wrap your, your, your heads around this or wrap your mind around this rebels this is serious business so this is serious business the power and the glory of God to be manifested in this season of your life this is serious business so now the question is how do we get it to manifest well what we have to do we have to recognize that every promise is the grace of God uh, and that we in order to experience those things in order for now the glory of God which is that that grace uh, we've got to now access the grace by faith and we looked over in Romans chapter 4, we were reading from the King James Version, and I just want to remind you that it is God's desire for us to live supernaturally, naturally. That that word supernatural, we'll never find that thing in the Bible because that is a given. That is supposed to be the norm for the believer. So to live supernaturally is the new norm. And now I want the new norm in your life to be the fact that all those things that you're desiring, that everything that you are believing God for, the faith for, that you're going to uh, see those things manifest. And what you have to do, you have to access the grace by faith. Well, the Bible says in Romans chapter 4, I was going to read it, uh, but I'm just going to share it with you. In Romans chapter 4, the Bible says uh, how, how Abraham uh, was not even a father. And we know that, that he had gotten old uh, and that his wife uh, had gotten old. Uh, and then even when she went home to be with the Lord, uh, Abraham was still able to have many more children. And they had tried to have children for quite some time, but uh, it couldn't happen naturally. And I want you to understand that when things cannot happen naturally for you, that is the grace. If it couldn't manifest naturally, it must be the grace. And I want you to say that, that if it couldn't manifest naturally, it must be the grace. Why? Because everything that God is going to deposit into your life, everything that God has for you in this season, it's got to be the grace. Everything that God is pouring into your lap in this season, it's supernatural. So you are not going to be able to attain certain things. You're not going to be able to experience uh, the manifestation the manifestation of great things or the glory of God naturally. Uh, it's not going to happen that way. So when you try to do it naturally and it doesn't work, you've got to convince your mind, you've got to get in your thinking, uh, that you got you have to get in your way of thinking, your mode of thinking, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You've got to get that thing in there. <laughs> You've got to practice the pause like I just did. You have to get that thing in there and say, listen, I'm going to be transformed by the renewing of my mind. And now I've renewed my mind. And in my mind, the same mind that is in me is also uh, the mind of Christ Jesus. And, uh, and I know that, 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 listen, certain things are only going to be deposited into my life in this season supernaturally. So if it couldn't happen naturally, it must be the grace. So Abraham couldn't uh, have uh, children with his wife naturally, so it had to be the grace. And the reality is that God had called him a father of many nations. 
uh, before he was even a father, that before he was even formed in his mother womb, in, in his mother's womb, God had already called him a father. So that is the grace. That is the grace. And God knows a man who's a hundred years old and his wife is old as dirt as well, that, that, that they, they don't have a child. Boy, that has to be the grace. So get your mind in that, that now because we are spirit, because we are a supernatural beings, we're not going to get from the world where we can only get from God. And yes, those things are done. They are completed. But now I've come to that point where I say, God, I need it right now. I'm a finite being serving an infinite God that, that God, I'm running out of time down here. So I need those things to manifest right now in my family. I need to see the visible manifestation of your power, God. God, I need to see and know that there is a, a, a God in heaven who sits high and looks low. God, I need to see the manifestation of the reality of heaven right here. And God says, listen, access the grace that I have for you, access the promises that I have for you, access those things by faith. And but the Bible talks about how Abraham did things by faith and how, how he was old in his body and didn't even consider uh, 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 the state of his body. And even that, he said, listen, I'm going to choose to believe. So I want you to understand this, to believe that God is going to do something because Abraham didn't believe that God was going to do something. He didn't believe that God was going to make him the father of many nations. Abraham said, listen, I am Abraham. I'm the father of many nations. I'm not even a father yet, but I am the father of of many nations, uh, that, that to believe that God is going to do something is unbelief. But faith is knowing that God has already done it. See, because when we thank God after the fact or after something has been done, that's just being thankful. When we praise God after it's been done, that's being uh, thankful. But when we praise God before the manifestation of a thing, that is faith. So the word unbelief is not having a lack of faith. The word unbelief is believing something that's not true. Uh, and, and if we are going to believe, if we are believing that God is going to do it, no wonder you're not ex experiencing the manifestation. Think about uh, the people of God and how they were held back from receiving that in which was promised to them because of unbelief. And you're going to be wandering in the wilderness, hoping and waiting and believing God for it when God is saying that if you believe that I've already done it, that's when you're going to experience the manifestation of it. Why? Because that unbelief is keeping you back from the power and the glory of God. So now to, unbel to, 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 to believe that God is going to do it is unbelief. That is believing a lie. Once again, who told you that you were naked? I didn't tell you that you was naked before you were naked in in, in, in unashamed, and now you're naked and ashamed. Who told you that you were naked? You are now walking in something that I didn't say. Who told you that the glory had departed? Who told you uh, that, that now uh, the glory is not around you, that, 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 that the glory of God is not accessible? I didn't say that. I said that, 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 that your Savior liveth, that he lives, and as long as he is alive, the glory of God remains. So now the problem is not that I haven't provided those things for you, but the problem is that you begin to believe a lie, that you begin to believe that the glory is some far off thing, that the glory is futuristic. The glory is not futuristic. The glory is the kingdom. Where is the kingdom? It's only inside of me that there may be bad news around me, but I can still praise God forever because he has done it. He's done what? He's manifested his glory. So now the glory, I've got good news on the inside of me, the Bible says that the kingdom of God is within, that, God, that it gives the Father in the New Testament good pleasure to give you the kingdom, what as a possession, that God has given us the kingdom as a possession. So now, why are we experiencing it? Because we believe that it's futuristic, but no, it's not futuristic. So now, God, I praise you forever because you have done it. So now my action or response to my faith or to what God has done is always praise. The Bible says that, that, that Abraham uh, was, was accredited uh, uh, righteousness. But then over Sorry. it's important to understand just as Abraham, Abraham wasn't focused on his body, but he was focused on what God said. He was focused on the promises. He was focused on the grace. Galatians 2.20 says that I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. I'm not going to consider the state of my body. I know that Christ lives on the inside of me. And whatever Christ says, that's what it's going to be. I no longer live, but Christ lives 
in me. And then it goes on a little further and says, I don't frustrate the grace. So now the grace is, uh, is the promise. The grace is the glory. The grace is the strength. The grace is everything that you've been hoping for. The grace is everything that you've been believing God for, for your family, for your marriage, for your relationships, for your church, for your pastor. Glory to God. That is the grace of God. I don't frustrate the grace. The grace is, there's an account of grace for you. And if you uh, do not access that thing, you got to access it by faith. And if you, if that unbelief, believing a lie is keeping you back from that, the grace is frustrated. Like, listen, everything they're waiting for, it's already here. I'm right here. But they're not uh, uh, actively uh, uh, walking in to receiving me because they're not accessing me by faith. So what we've got to do is understand that everything that we're going to receive is supernatural, but we've got to do it by faith. And now when we uh, uh, hear the message, when we hear the fact that there is an account of grace for us, uh, that when we hear that word, uh, and remember that your experience is not determined by your experience, but your experience is determined by the message. Uh, um, uh, that, that, that Remember that John came with the message and he says, repent for the kingdom is at hand. Repent. The kingdom, what? The kingdom is the glory of God. The kingdom is the power and the glory of God. And now the kingdom is here. We've heard that message. Now, what is our response? Now, we really believe this word. If we really believe that the kingdom is right here, right now, that the kingdom is within, that God wants heaven to be experienced right here on earth, then now we have to respond to what we've heard. We've got to respond to the message. We've got to respond to the fact that it's done. So now, our response or our action uh, that comes uh, from we from what we believe is always praise. So now go back to uh, Psalm 52. God, I will praise you forever because you have done it. So uh, so we know that we praise God because He's already done it. So our response or or our our, our action is always praise. So now when we praise God. This is what the whole thing looks like. And we know that praise has so much power. The Bible says, uh, and it shows us here in this passage, and all these passages grouped together, that our faith, that we have to release faith for the grace, that we've got to believe that it's already done. Uh, we got to understand that before Abraham was formed in the womb, that God already called him father. We know that because uh, 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 God is saying, because Abraham was it, I called him it. Well, he, he hasn't had a child yet, but no, God says he, he is it. Before he was it, I called him it. Uh, and then now he's going to walk into that thing because of his faith. That before it be not, uh, it was. Before it be not, it was. And I'm talking in scripture code if you understand what I'm saying. So we've got to respond to the grace of God with faith. The grace of God is your promise. Now respond to it with by faith. That we, we know that when we come to God, we've got to believe that we have already received. Unbelief. This is how you know that you're struggling with unbelief. If you are operating as if the things that you're believing God for is going to come, there's an issue of unbelief. And right there, that is why you're not experiencing the manifestation. Because you believe it's going to happen. Change your language. Change your thinking. Be renewed. Be transformed. Renew your mind. Renew your mind so that it looks and sounds like the word of God. Uh, that that uh, leave, leave unbelief in the past. Unbelief is so 2016, baby. This is 2017. We are. This is a year of focus. We're focusing on what God has says and said. And we know that, that we're going to respond to the grace by faith. We're going to respond to the grace with faith. Abraham had six more children. Understand that it, it, you're going to try it naturally. It's not going to work. It must be the grace. I've tried to get certain things, uh, but it must be the grace. And when you tap into the grace, you get more. Uh, and uh, I think I got all confused again because I was going to uh, read um, uh, this. Oh yeah, verse 20 of Romans chapter 4, it says this, in being fully persuaded, that's faith. Now, he's heard promises from God. He's received the promises from, from God. He's received uh, a telling of the glory of God in being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was also able to perform uh, well, that was verse 21 but watch this a little further up in verse 20 it says he staggered not he staggered not he didn't waver he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief believing uh, a lie uh, they, that God was going to do it he staggered not uh, at the promise of God through unbelief, but it was strong in faith, in faith, access the faith, uh, access the grace by faith. He was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Come on now, folks. 
I praise you forever, God, because you have done it. Everything that God has set out for your life is already done. It's not futuristic. If you believe that he's going to do it, you're struggling with unbelief. And unbelief, just like the people of God in the Bible, that unbelief will keep you from experiencing the power and the glory of God. God, we praise you forever because you have done it. God, reprogram our thinking right now in Jesus' name. Father, we believe that, uh, that, that you have an account of grace for us. That there's an account of grace that has been set aside for us because of the faithful uh, uh, belief, because of the faith of Abraham, and because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. So, Father, right now we repent. We repent for our stinking thinking. God, right now we ask you for forgiveness uh, for, for the fact that we have wavered and what we believe, God. Uh, now, right now, we receive the change. God, now we receive the download now, in Jesus' name and now upload it in the natural. Father, we know that you know all things, that everything that you know, you've already done. What you've done, you already know. And now you're bringing us into the know that it's already done. So, God, we praise you forever because you have done it. God, our response is always praise. God, we access the faith. We access the grace by faith. And when we access uh, uh, the grace by faith, our response is praise because we know that you have done it. So God, as we pray to you, no matter what time of the day it is that we're watching this, God, with those things that we are praying to you about concerning our prayers and petitions, God, we now access the answer, access the glory, access the grace by faith. And we say, God, we praise you forever because you have done it. So now let something rise on the inside of us. That let, let rivers rise on the inside of us, God. Let streams of praise rise on the inside of us because we know that that is the response of the believer. God bless you. I'll see you this Sunday. Love you. Peace.